Hey, what's up, car shipping rock stars? It's your girl Ashley from ReloGeek.com. And in this video, we're talking about five things you should consider before selecting your route. When it comes to starting your car hauling business, there's many things that you need to consider. And instead of getting to all of them, we're gonna cover one, and that is your route. Before we get into that, there's three types of car haulers. One, car haulers that run on a dedicated route. Two, car haulers that go wherever the money is. And three, car haulers that do both. Not only do they run on dedicated routes, but they choose their routes based on where the money is. When you start in your car hauling business, it's just hard to decide which one of those three you're gonna be. But don't worry, I'm not telling you to put yourself in a box, so to speak, because the more time that you run, the more time that you will realize who you are, and then you will just know. In the meantime, here's five things that you should consider before selecting any route. Number one, tolls. Let's say there's a specific route that you have in mind. For instance, Florida to New York and vice versa. The first thing you wanna ask yourself is, are there tolls along this route? If there are tolls, this could take away from your potential profit. You know, you're gonna make a certain amount of money on the route, but then you have to consider the fact that you have to pay for tolls. Now, the thing is, you might can choose a route that is paying the same amount of money, but without the tolls, which in turn means that route is gonna pay a lot more and that might be more feasible for your business. Number two, highways. Now, if you've driven a truck for any amount of time, you know how important it is to stay on highway for as long as possible. Going off the beaten path, so to speak, is what's going to kill your profit. Why? Because time is money. And the more time that you spend off highway, the longer it's going to take, which means less money in your pockets. Number three, round trip. On any route that you're considering, you need to ask yourself, can I return? The last thing you want to do is find yourself in a location where you have to drive hundreds of miles just to get a load going back to where you began or going to your next destination, if that's the case. When you become an owner and operator, deadhead miles are a big no-no. Keeping your deadhead miles or the miles that you have to drive without a load to a minimum is going to be the difference between a successful route and a not so successful one. Number four, height restrictions. Now I love me some New York City, but we all know it's not the most trucker friendly place to be. And this is true for a lot of small towns. You want to make sure that you know the height restrictions going in. Now, obviously, this is going to be a big factor in almost any city you go to. But the key is measuring your truck on every load, on every route, and knowing how high it is. So when you see one of those low clearance signs, you know to either A, avoid it, or B, know whether you can go underneath it or not. There's no room for Russian roulette here. You need to know your height of your vehicle on every single trip you make and know where you're going before you go. For instance, again, using New York City, you know that going into New York City can cause problems. So if you know how high your truck is and then anytime you see a low clearance sign, you know to turn around and get out of there before there is trouble. The last thing you want is to realize it after you're stuck under an overpass. Number five, easily accessible. Now going along with the on the beaten path or staying to the highway route that we talked about, you wanna make sure that any route that you choose is easily accessible. You do not wanna find yourself going into a very rural location where you have to drive for miles and miles on a back road. And because I love you guys so much, here's a bonus one, traffic. As much as you can't control traffic, Try to plan your routes to optimize driving time. Whether it's choosing to drive all night long into large cities or choosing to avoid stretches of highway where there's known to be a lot of traffic. As an example for you guys, I like to talk about I-95. Let's say you're headed north on I-95 into New York. Rather than choose the route of staying on I-95 through big cities like Baltimore, you can choose to go the back roadway and in turn, going through Delaware would avoid a hot traffic spot of Baltimore. So there you have it, five things to consider before choosing your route. 
As you can see, it's hard to avoid every single situation, but by being smart about planning your routes enables you to maximize your profit. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos just like it. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Ashley from ReloGeek.com. Now get out there and make moves happen. I will see you in the next video.